This is like a, a playbook and kind of our arsenal of equipment. And it's, it does have its limitations. It's not a one size fits all shoe size for, for rescue, but the design or the, the concept was something that we could deploy very quickly from a big rig or heavy apparatus off the side of a, a road, like a steep embankment, which in our area, we have a lot of canyon roads, uh, mountainous terrain. And so this affords us the ability to rapidly hook things up and then run. It's basically a steep angle retrieval or rescue coming up. And we can easily just do a standard uh, steep angle through a high directional. But what we're gonna do is we have this pre-rig kit on a, like a 600 foot line. So the max distance we can go out to anchor, I wouldn't say 300 because we're gonna tie some knots and we need some uh, excess on the back end to coil up around a, around a winch. So it's about 280 feet, give or take. It does have its limitations. Some people call it all sorts of different things. Let's start off by delineating the difference between a high line or like a steep high line and a tracking line. Again, high lines have track lines, but not tracking lines. And like this imaginary delineator between when a, a tracking line becomes a, a high line and when a high line no longer is a high line and becomes a tracking line, it's the angle of that track line where the, the pulleys to the rescue package sit. 120 degrees is that critical angle. And once we, once we flatten that out beyond there, technically we can say, okay, we're in high line territory. And the rigging principles kind of change because the forces that our anchors see start to drastically uh, exponentially increase. And so if we, if we float it below or we collapse it below 120, we're in tracking line territory. But with this kit, you could consider it somewhat of a hybrid. I'm gonna call it a, a high line, but we do have the ability to, to adjust on the fly that catenary angle through a continuously adjustable track line. We start off with our, our rope bag, our 600 foot rope bag, and we set it back away from our electric capstan winch. This is what we're tensioning and detensioning with. Again, there's no auto locking feature here, but that's okay. It, it goes through a change of direction and then the bite, so let's see, as it goes through this change of direction, this portion of the line, you could say it doesn't truly terminate. It terminates at a pulley on a directional off of like a big, a big strong anchor. And then it routes back here. And then we jump, put a load cell in so we can keep track of our tension forces and figure out what safety factors we wanna operate at. Is this a Kootenai Highline system? No, we, we, we do not adhere to the Kootenai principles on this. And we have to understand exactly why and what we're doing if we're gonna break those principles. And the big principle we're breaking on this whole Kootenai concept is if you look, this looks very much like our standard rigging package where we do a, a double long tail ball line with, with a main red and an orange belay. And we just have whatever. This is a pre-rigged carriage for a highline system, but we can adapt it to tracking lines. And we just clip into the yoke as well. So this could be a Kootenai pulley. We aren't doing any knot bypasses. On a highline, the red, uh, you could call it a control line. Right here, it's a main working line. But this is not belay for a failing track line in the highline system because there is no lower system control line so if there's a failure of the track line system like this it's gone and we're okay with that because the whole intent of this is just to float this litter no more than three feet off the ground similar to like what you would do with a tracking line you're like flying nap of the earth and we have to be cognizant of that because if we have the ability to on the fly just to to jack this up way off the ground and if we aren't cognizant of what the intent is we can be putting rescuers and victims in danger so long as we are operating close to the ground because a failure would just drop this from like our our thigh to the ground and it's not a catastrophic failure the whole intent of this is just to, to float the litter if you look downhill at all that loose vegetation we're just floating this litter off it makes our job a lot easier on the haul we don't have to put a whole bunch of rescuers on a litter package like you do on a standard steep angle through a high directional you usually have at least three here we don't even need one if we don't have to but we're going to put one on just for the sake of arguments to show you that it can be done and that rescuer can choose what how he wants to be connected in here we just rigged the standard set of fours for uh, a ventral connection point on the rescuer with your standard prussic backup uh, on one of the long tails and and that rescuer should mine this so that he is always standing on the ground regardless of the height of this litter we don't want a rescuer to to, <laughs> to elevate off um, so that's the general intent and the design we want this head to be high but not high enough where we can't reach it it should only be as high as needed to, to clear the obstructions really to, to, to provide their proper descent angle so that this litter can adequately float off the ground we don't need it to be 
like 12 feet up in the air. The higher we send this uh, high directional, the weaker, inherently weaker this thing becomes. Um, so we don't need to do that. We do want to route our, let's pan the camera up close here. These, this is our dual, this orange is our dual uh, track line and the red is our uh, main lowering line. Not an upper control line because it's not a true Kootenai high line. However, I rigged this, it's dealer's choice. It looks a little confusing what I did here, but you could easily just clip carabiners and call it good. I just wanted to keep these two lines as close in height together and as close together like as a bundle. The, the more I can do that, the cleaner everything is in the long run. And our standard adjustable set of fours where our belay line routes as we make a transition. Because this is pretty common rigging. Let's look at our belays. So orange standard belay through our Aztec, but there's also this ASAP on the static or, or fixed end. This is an option. Overly redundant? Yes. I don't need both of them. If I'm manpower limited, I can just remove this belay line altogether, get it out, and we can just operate on an independent self-belay for our, our rescue package. If I don't want to do an independent self-belay, I can do an independent team belay, and we can belay from the top, but that requires an additional person to, to tend the belay, to mind it. There are trade-offs that I won't get into uh, on this video. Let's slowly pan back and let's show you kind of our, our base set up here. We extend our, our independent team belay ASAP on a bungee forward so that when we haul up, we don't create this dead leg. We keep everything nice and straight with minimal slack. And we needed to change the direction to feed that adjustable track line through our Amcus windless capstan winch here. And then again, the load cell, we, we, want, to mi we want to see what our load is constantly. So we need somebody to constantly monitor that. And then we direct, we, we dual purpose out our pendle hitch and we direct to change the direction on our main working line somewhere else. Depending on the forces, if you're going straight high angle, we probably want to have some sort of pulley system here and then use our Harkin 40 Skyhook winch on the back end of it. We don't want to burn the motor out. We don't want to drastically drain the batteries out, hauling heavier loads direct. We're doing that here because I want to see what the angle change, because as this thing goes from high to steep to low, there's less force that we're really pulling here. So if I can get away with no mechanical advantage and going straight through a series of change of directions to the winch, I'm going to do that. So I'm going to start off operating directly off of the winch. If it's not feasible or for draining our battery, we can instantaneously convert, which is why I put this uh, directional back to our ambulance back here. And I have all this additional rigging equipment here because if I need to change something up on the fly, I can instantaneously do that by putting in a maestro with a three to one here and then directing it out into the winch. So the winch would then be pulling on reduced force on a three to one. Okay, so a quick way to deploy the 600 footer that's pre-rigged is to just lay the bag out in line behind the Amcus windlass right there. And as this line comes in, it's good to just have this pre-rigged, pre-set and pre-routed through the pulley. It routes beyond our easel leg. The pre-rig part of this is this entire pendle hitch with our change in direction here and then continuing on to the bite. So it's dual track, but really it's kind of like a single track. There's no redundancy. It's going through this ultra strong, ridiculously strong pulley. That's a huge sheave uh, because we anticipate not only like highline uh, tension forces, but we're, we're duplicating it or we're doubling it, which is why maybe like a material handling pulley that's overkill gives everybody a warm and fuzzy that at least this part of the system is not going to fail. Into a really bomber quick link, into a really bomber swivel, because as the person drags this thing all the way over the slope and all the way down, there does exist the potential for the lines to get twisted. And this uh, swivel here just helps self-correct so that we don't have to figure this out later if our line, if these two lines are in fact twisted. And then a ridiculously huge material handling sling. It would be great if we could just find some bomber anchor and wrap this around down below but it might not be the case. This is where just creative rigging, we can substitute this if we need to, but as a default, this is all pre-rigged for just this rapid deployment action down a steep embankment off the side of the road or a slope or something. So we're gonna send one or two rescuers, depending, just to grab this and then go down the slope and then rig that in. 680 on the track line, copy that. Okay, Jan, watch that bush in front of her. Six forty on track. Stop. Stop. What do you need? Just move 
You want us to go up on track? Up on track. Up on track. Up on track. Very slow. Just feather that thing. 750. Keep. Eight. 850. 900. Good there. Okay, stop there. 930, we're okay there. We're slightly below 10 to 1 safety factor, but we're okay. All right. Ready? Up. Up on main. Okay, take on belay. Got a little slack in there. There you go. Nice. Nice, there it is. Keep coming. Nice. What's our load cell? Uh, 790. 790. Our load cell is decreasing. All right, keep coming up. 780. 780, yeah. Keep shouting numbers out at me. Okay. Keep 760. 760, keep coming up. Yeah. And when we come up, get that head vertically in line. There we go. 750, keep coming up. Keep coming up. Keep coming up. 740. 740. Stop! Stop! Okay, cool. Down on track line completely. 100% detention the track line. Full out. All right, Jan, yep. you're good now. You can come out of the system. Okay. So you can detach, and we're going to transition this litter in through our high direction. You want that belay? Yeah, choke that belay all the way up. And this is how we transition through our head here. We're going we're gonna to detention the track line completely, get that belay line all the way up, and we're going to treat this as a standard up, down, through a high directional. Prepare for down on main. Okay. Now that our track line is completely detensioned, oh yeah, Justin, we can take that all the way out. Let's get this, this completely out. So undo all four pulleys and let this thing just hang in the yoke. And we're no longer using a track line and we're just using a main and a belay and that's it. And then just like before, what we're gonna do is that paradoxical motion. And so the next sequence here is going to be, we're going to go down on main that and that let's, let's, let's clip this out so to get this out. out. Yep. And okay. then we're going to hand over hand, pull the belay line in. Okay. Okay. We set. Looking good. Oh, yes, belay. Okay, good. okay. All right. Down on main, in on belay. Down on main. And now we're just doing the paradoxical motion. So we're, we're lowering it down. We're bringing it in on that belay line back to safe ground over here. Keep going. There we go. Keep going. Grab that head and pull it towards us. There we go. Get it out of harm's way. All right. Full down on main. Full down on main. Until there's nothing left and then give slack. We're about on the ground, flat ground. 